Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another live stream Tuesday, no, Thursday evening, the 10th of August, 7.35 p.m. in mainland Spain, I think. Just let me check. Yes, that is correct. 6.35 p.m. in the Canary Islands and 6.35 p.m. where I am here today in Portugal on Portuguese time. I hope everybody is well. And as usual, we'll look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention today in the press. We'll also look at some comments that have been left on the videos recently. And in the second half of today's live stream, I'll go to the chat section here to my right and check out what the chat section is talking about today, the viewers in that chat section. So if you've got something to add to the conversation, feel free, the chat section is for you. Now, the first piece of news today uh, related to the tourism industry in Spain, one of the big motors of the economy, and it's back with a vengeance. As we can see here, tourism is once again an economic dynamo. One in four new jobs is linked to the sector. The tourism sector in Spain is again consolidating its position as one of the main drivers of the Spanish economy after the lull caused by the pandemic. This is demonstrated by the employment figures for the second quarter in which there were 146,678 more workers linked to the sector than in the same period last year. In this way, tourism employment accounts for a quarter of what has been created in this time, representing up to 24.9% according to the report published on Wednesday by Tour de España and which has been prepared with data from the Labour Force Survey. So there we go, tourism back again, again the economic dynamo. One in four new, jo new jobs in Spain linked to the tourism sector. And uh, it's always in the spotlight, the tourism sector in Spain, for various reasons, for one reason or another, always in the headlines and some of the jobs that are created in tourism, let's be honest, not the best jobs as we know. Second piece of news here today, the uh, PP party, the Partido Popular, is willing to go to an investiture with backing of only 172 MPs if the king asks Feijo to do so. The Popular Party has confirmed on Wednesday that its leader, Alberto Núñez Feijó, will take part in the investiture session even if he does not have the necessary support. The Secretary General of the PP, Cuca Gamarra, insisted on Wednesday that the progress made in recent days reinforces the position of the popular president as the eventual candidate for the presidency of the government after Vox offered its 33 seats on Sunday without demanding anything in return that only deputy of Coalición Canadia was open uh, on Monday to vote in favour of Feijó after guaranteeing the ultras that they will not enter the government and that the UPN, the Navarra uh, party, has confirmed its yes. But even so, the bloc led by uh, the PP leader would, would add 172 votes in favour, adding to its 137 deputies, the 33 of Vox, the seat of UPN, and another of Coalición Canadia. So almost impossible, I think, for Mr. Feijo to uh, get the support that he needs because he only has 172. He needs 176. And I think Mr. Sanchez will also uh, sit down and try to get the support that he needs to get over the line with 176 members of parliament supporting that investiture campaign as we saw there so we'll see what happens maybe mr sanchez can pull the proverbial rabbit out of the hat with mr pouge de mont's support if they uh, decline to uh, vote on that day of course uh, we'll see what happens i imagine that negotiations are going on behind the scenes as we speak well probably not now because it's uh, a bit late in the day for anything to be going on in the middle of summer i think now, the uh, next piece of news, let's have a look here. Uh, uh, Vox, the Vox Party, the ultra-conservative party in Spain, again reeling because another of its members of parliament has quit. 
Juan Luis Stigman has also resigned from his position in Vox after the departure of Espinosa de los Monteros, the soap opera unleashed in Vox after the resignation of Ivan Espinosa de los Monteros seems not to be over. Juan Luis Stigman, number six on the list for Madrid, and automatic replacement for Espinosa de los Monteros, has also resigned to pick up his deputy seat and will not form part of the Vox parliamentary group. This has been announced by Libertad Digital and confirmed by El Mundo, through sources in the party's leadership. Stigman, a renowned doctor by profession, was one of the most relevant figures of the party in Congress in the last legislature, despite being the focus of attacks from sectors of the electorate opposed to vaccination. So there we go, number the second person in less than a week to resign from the Vox political party. So they're going to have to do a reshuffle there and uh, obviously a power shift going on behind the scenes there with uh, two important members of that party leaving, uh, leaving the open, leaving it open for other people to take their space, obviously with ideas more in line of the people running that party. Apparently that is what they are saying. So we'll see how that one plays out. Fuel back in the headlines because petrol prices have risen by 1.8% and returns to levels of a year ago when the discount was applied. Petrol and diesel has risen on average by 1.8% and 3.4% respectively in the last week, confirming their upward trend by chaining their fifth consecutive rise, which in the case of, fir- well, of the first fuel brings them back to the levels of a year ago in the middle of the holiday season. According to the European Union Oil Bulletin, which collects data from more than 11,400 service stations in Spain between the 1st and 7th of August, the average price of petrol stood at just over €1.68 per litre, while diesel cost almost €1.55 per litre. So fuel again in the headlines because it's going up, 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 up for the holiday season, the August holiday season, and uh, people being smashed at the Bowser uh, up, as we saw there. What were the uh, figure? Petrol up by nearly 2% and uh, diesel up by nearly 3.5%, so some increases there. And the final piece of news today that we'll look at, this one here, related to the uh, Women's World Cup, Spain has another date with history in that World Cup. They are looking for the semis against the tough Netherlands. Spain continues to make giant strides in football at the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, and locals witnessing this firsthand against the, uh, against the Netherlands, which will be shown at 3 a.m. Central European time. They are looking for a place in the semi-finals of the tournament. The, coach, the team coached by Jorge Bilda has become one of the main favourites to win the World Cup on the 20th of August. Although, they, uh, although, although to do so, they will have to win uh, tickets first, whatever that means. It won't be easy to reach the final, but the Spanish team is dreaming of it. Before doing so, they will have to leave their rivals behind, and the next one is the Netherlands. The Netherlands will be their opponents in the quarterfinals of this World Cup. It will be a tough match against the team of more than proven level. So Spain getting through to this round, of course. They beat, I can't remember who they beat the other day, but it was a fairly resounding victory. Um, Something like... um, if I remember correctly, 5-1, and the, the goal that went into the Spanish uh, into the uh, Spanish net, I think, was an own goal. I think, can't remember exactly, but uh, that was the thing. Uh, England's also through. The United States is out. The Netherlands are through. France is through, and they are playing Australia. And uh, I want to thank uh, Charles, I think it was. Just let me check on my phone. I think it was Charles for supporting the channel uh, the other day. Yes, and reminding me to mention the Women's World Cup, and asking me why I haven't done it previously. Well, the reason is that I don't normally talk about football on this channel, even the Men's World Cup, I probably don't really mention. So not really into football myself, but I've mentioned it today. First comment here coming up from Shirley, absolutely disgusting behavior by tourists. I'm glad they weren't British. I hope the woman or the woman who glassed the waiter is found. Surely the bar should be careful how much drink they serve people who are already inebriated inebriated enough. I think that should be. In the UK, 
My local pub refuses to serve more alcohol to people who are obviously drunk. As a vegetarian, I think British food is best. They definitely offer more vegan and vegetarian choices. My personal choice, though, I think uh, British food has improved over the years, says Shirley. So there we go. Uh, Talking about the uh, first comment there, which is uh, related to the first part of the comment related to that disgusting behavior which we saw the other day in, where was it, Mallorca, I think it was. I'm not going to talk too much about it. We know what happened. And also that glassing incident in Ibiza where the person apparently hasn't been caught yet, or at least it hasn't made the press, uh, this person's arrest. So not sure what's going on there, but it was an ugly incident indeed, a very ugly incident. And the other point uh, that uh, Shirley makes here, uh, that maybe we need to cut off Uh, alcohol to people that are already too drunk that could be a good idea and I'm not sure why it's not already happening in lots of bars and restaurants in uh, countries like Spain it should be happening uh, and uh, I imagine that it needs to be um, enforced Uh, people need to crack down on that know when people have had enough and cut off the alcohol tap so to speak and the last point here about uh, Spanish food Uh, British food is best as a vegetarian, according to Shirley, because as we know, it is difficult to be a vegetarian in Spain with the traditional cuisine, let's say. If you want to go find a vegetarian restaurant, sure, you can find one. But the traditional Spanish cuisine, uh, yeah, not not a lot of uh, vegetarian options uh, in restaurants. At home, maybe, yes, but in restaurants, difficult to find those vegetarian choices because normally meat or fish are the two primary um, uh, ingredients in restaurants in Spain. The uh, another comment here, let me see this one here from uh, Jonas. Uh, number one dish for Jonas El Jonas is paella valenciana, and the second one here calamares con alioli. Now I asked this question yesterday about uh, what people's favourite types of food were in Spain. And uh, Jonas here pointing out paella, valenciana, and calamares con alioli. And we had a few people give their uh, favorites, lots of paella, and uh, other dishes as well. In fact, I think this one here from Bailey, my favorite was merluza con salsa verde. And uh, merluza, or hake, I will say, is my favorite fish dish in Spain, whether it's this one here or uh, merluza a la vasca, merluza a la gallega, merluza frita, any type of merluza I tend to enjoy. So one of my favorite uh, types of fish is merluza. And uh, if I go to a restaurant and I have the choice of uh, merluza or meat on the menu, I'll choose fish. I will choose fish, that one in particular. Another comment here from uh, Jean. I watched that program with Phil Vickery. Yes, you are correct with everything you say. It looked very tasty but soggy. Yes, that was the paella that was done by celebrity chef Phil Vickery. Now, I'm not criticizing Mr. Vickery for his culinary skills in general. I'm sure that he is a a good chef, a renowned chef. I read that he had a a Michelin star back in the day in one of his restaurants. So I'm not uh, criticizing his uh, uh, skills as a chef. But the uh, dish that he uh, uh, put on national television, on British national television the other day, I think the program is called This Morning uh, there in the UK, it's been involved in a scandal recently with one of the uh, presenters, I believe. But uh, the paella that he dished up to the two presenters the other day left a little bit to be desired, in my opinion. As I uh, pointed out there, and I, the point that I made yesterday, the seafood looked good, but uh, the quality of the rice, which is the key aspect of the paella, uh, too soggy, too um, uh, gluggy, you would say, also. It looked like uh, glue. So uh, I don't think it was uh, the best paella, but that's what they're dishing up on national television there, and that's the uh, best that he can cook on national television. Well, as I said, leaves a little bit to be desired, but not criticizing Mr. Vickery's cooking skills for other dishes, no doubt. Another one here from uh, Haley. Spend more time with your family is code for I can't be asked with it anymore. And this is related to the uh, Vox Member of Parliament resigning, Mr. 
Espinosa de los Mont Montero, or whatever he was called. Can't remember exactly what he was called. Espinosa de los Monteros, one of these uh, long surnames. And uh, that's what he said, spending more time with his family. That's what he said in his goodbye speech the other day, that he had some family members in hospital, the kids are growing up, uh, etc., etc., and he wants to get out. But behind the scenes, people are, or the rumours are saying that uh, there is a power struggle going on in that political party because of the bad results, I think, that they got at the uh, recent elections and uh, people trying to uh, get more power in that party. And uh, Mr. Espinosa not happy, I don't think, with the way that party is heading. So we'll see what happens with that. And as we saw all earlier today, also another high-profile member of that political party has also resigned. So uh, as I said, we'll see where Vox heads over the next uh, couple of years. Another one here from Petey, a long comment, so bear with me. Spain has lots of delicious ingredients such as great fruit and vegetables plus the world's best olive oil. I find their food a bit sameish after a day or two. Their seafood is more often frozen than not and lots of pre-prepared meals nowadays. Black and white pudding is very popular in Ireland. There are lots of types of vegetarian black pudding. Spanish food is good but overrated. Their meat and dairy just doesn't compare to their Irish counterparts. Lots of visitors to northern European countries don't try the local cuisine. They just eat fast food and think, ah, oh, that's English, German, Irish. But try an Irish stew of beef and Guinness, a good quality cod and chips in the west of England, or a homemade schnitzel in Germany before they knock other cuisines. Spain, uh, Spain thanks for their best olive oil, delicious artichokes, but disappointing desserts. P.S. Keep chorizo out of your paella and all your cooking. There's very little in the way of meat in it. Yes, one thing that I do agree with here with Petey's comment. In fact, I agree with most things that uh, Pete says in that comment. But uh, desserts in Spain leave a lot to be des desired. Disappointing is the word used by Pete. And uh, I second the use of that word there. Disappointing uh, postres in general in Spain. In Portugal, you get better desserts. I think they put more uh, effort into their desserts here. They have been uh, inventive with desserts, lots of different types. Some of them do taste a little bit the same, but uh, I do find Portugal better for desserts, but that's just my opinion, of course. And the other thing that we mentioned uh, that Pete uh, points out here is that Spanish food can be a bit sameish after a day or two. Yes, I agree with that point also. And uh, some other comments here generally, but importantly, keep chorizo out of that paella. Keep it out. Another one here from uh, LV. Catalonia nationalism has been a thought in the side of Spain for far too long. They simply believe that to, to be above the rest of Spaniards and therefore entitled to special treatment. It would be an absolute travesty for the central government to cancel the Catalonia debt in detriment to the rest of Spain. I for one wish that Catalonia and the Basque region become independent once and for all and leave the rest of Spain in peace. Yes, interesting there. I had a few people tell me that I was off the mark with my comments yesterday about uh, an anti-Catalonian sentiment. Uh, I changed my words during that sentence. I said an anti-Catalonian autonomous community sentiment, uh, which Vox is famous for. That's the first thing that they want to scrap. And uh, this person here saying that, why don't they just become independent once and for all? Well, difficult, because if you look at a map of Spain, and uh, all of the uh, main land, all of the main roads that come into Spain, where do they enter? Where do they enter? They enter through the Basque Country, or they enter through Catalonia. And uh, two of the towns on those borders with France, one in the Basque Country and one in Catalonia, are very wealthy towns indeed, with all of the transport coming through. So. What does Spain do if those two places become independent? Do you have to do some type of deal with them to get the goods through into the country? Don't know. Maybe they'll slap a tax on every truck that comes through and it'll end up costing us more. That could be another thing. I don't know. So uh, if I were the Spanish government, maybe look at uh, some type of tunnel through Aragon uh, under the Pyrenees there into France, if that's possible. Don't know. I think it's been done in other European countries in the Alps, for example, these uh, tunnels that go through the Alps. So maybe they could do something there similar, but I don't know about the cost. But uh, all of the main roads that come into Spain from France 
go through either the Basque Country or through Catalonia. So if they become independent, again, what would happen? What would happen? That would be the key, wouldn't it? And uh, another thing pointed out here that uh, about that debt. Yeah, I think the minister the other day spoke about pardoning or rearranging the uh, financing system. And uh, one of the things that popped up would be uh, was that cancellation of Catalonian debt, which is apparently, as I read the other day, 70 billion. But I don't think uh, anything will be done, or at least some press outlets that I have read are a bit skeptical about it. And the final comment here from Ed at uh, 2 minutes 26 in yesterday's video, the Portuguese commies are still knocking around. Not a question, but statement there from Ed. And the answer is yes. The uh, Communist Party here in Portugal has a local office uh, in the town where I am here currently. Looks a bit uh, run down. Needs a, a coat of paint like a lot of buildings in Portugal. And uh, we saw a sign up yesterday in the video. I showed a sign where there's a concert coming up. It's an annual event. I think it's the annual Communist Party event here in Portugal. They've recently changed leaders. The um, traditional uh, or the uh, older leader that was in uh, uh, power of that party for a long time, I think a couple of decades, Geronimo, somebody his name is, has uh, uh, given up the post to somebody else, a younger uh, person, and uh, the Communist Party still uh, participating in elections here. I don't know whether they get a lot of support. I think I read that they only got... Um, I can't remember the exact details, so I won't say it, the exact figures, but uh, not the most popular party here in Portugal anymore, of course, uh, and uh, neither in Spain anymore. In fact, I don't think uh, officially they exist in Spain. They might do, I don't know, but I think they call themselves something else nowadays and not the uh, Communist Party in, those, uh, in that terminology. But I stand to be proven wrong, so if I am, please let me know. Now, into the uh, chat section I'm going to go now. Uh, before I do that, I'll just put the like icon on the screen. So just where my glass of water is, you can see the like icon. Go down to the bottom of the video and you will find it. And uh, if you can do us a favor and hit that like button, please. See if I can get the sound right today. It might be a bit loud, I'm not sure. Um, and also the uh, email address for people if you have anything that you want to send me. This is the email address here, whether it's an article about Spain, something that you have found interesting that I haven't mentioned on the channel, please send it to this address here, Spain Speaks, or this address here, Spain Speaks at gmail.com. Feel free to send them through. And also the uh, support button for people that have supported the channel recently. Uh, super thanks the other day from John Generous. Uh, super thanks. Thank you very much, John. You know who you are. People that have bought me a coffee people that I mentioned before, and uh, long, longer term supporters on Patreon. Links in the description below if you're interested in supporting the channel. Now into the chat, let me see if I can scroll up to the top here. Let me uh, organize it. Let me organize it here quickly. Uh, okay, here we go. Let me see the first one that I can see is from Andrew. Regular viewer is Andrew, good evening. Hope I am well. Had our summer today in London uh, with sun all day and 27. Good to see that that summer day has finally arrived there. 27 degrees and sunny all day. Andrew also talking to uh, Andrew the, uh, to Alan there. There we go. El Puerto. Ross coming in from Valencia. Very hot there today. 42 degrees. And according to his thermometer, uh, that was the temperature, but still uh, with the saving winds. So the winds cooling things, uh, cooling things down a little bit, no doubt, there in Valencia. But 42 degrees in Valencia with the uh, humidity there, very, very hot. Very, very hot. Absolutely. Pauline coming in as well from Rojales, which is also in the Valencian community. Hello, Pauline. I imagine that it was hot there too. Erica confirming that it's hot in Terrassa also with the yellow warning uh, and uh, enjoying life uh, even with those. Uh, uh, no, for those who like high temperatures, enjoying life. There we go. So hot in Catalonia too. Exploring Jen coming in from Valencia. Hot there as well. Everybody's saying the same thing. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, Amanda's coming in from uh, Shropshire. Uh, Alan's in the chat as well. Uh... Very sad news from Maui, Hawaii. Paradise turned into hell on earth. Not sure what's happened there, uh, Alan. Uh, 
Armando, Armando coming in from Sydenham, Southeast London. Uh, always see the videos, great content and information, great content and information, keep it up. Thank you very much, uh, Armando, for that. Good to see you here today. Richard coming in from North Yorkshire. Uh, warm and humid there. Just wondering if anyone else is having issues with Endesa. They only have uh, taken two payments this year out of the bank, February and April. Yeah, they'll take the rest out, uh, uh, Richard, no doubt, when they get around to organising it. Uh, they'll just um, send you a bill for the difference, I imagine. Uh, these companies do whatever they want, basically. <laughs> Uh, Jose Antonio is in the chat as well, uh, saying hello to everybody. Uh, Bronnie is coming in from uh, Wales, South Wales, finally feeling like uh, it's a summer. Best wishes there. Thank you very much. 23 degrees, partially sunny. Renan coming in from a cloudy LA today. They're in uh, the United States of America. Sani coming in from uh, a sunny and warm Basingstoke. Hello, Sani. Good to see you in the chat also. Um, Jen's saying here about supermarkets. I saw yesterday that they start in supermarkets putting anti-theft devices on olive oil bottles. Usually uh, knows them on high-priced alcohol drinks, uh, normally on high-priced alcohol drinks and expensive whiskey, for example. Yeah, um, obviously olive oil is the price of olive oil yeah, at the moment. Uh, Jen is meaning that people are now... Uh, using the old five finger discount with the uh, olive oil the old five finger discount and uh, taking it or stealing it from supermarkets forcing supermarkets to put some type of uh, alarm on the bottles or anti-theft device on the bottles and uh, I've seen that also where I live with some of the more premium olive oils the ones that now cost seven or eight euros a bottle because it's a staple in every spanish kitchen and when it gets too expensive and people start thinking do i buy it or not away they go leading supermarkets to do that uh there we go and the price uh, a one liter bottle of carbonel 10 euros that's the reason why people are doing that i imagine sani uh grant coming in from uh, El Siero or Siero there in Asturias hot in the day fresh in the night that's uh, probably the best type of weather where you get a decent day but a cool night when you can sleep absolutely Maureen coming in from a warm northwest London hello Maureen Maureen good to see you here uh, Welsh Toto's in the chat good to see Welsh Toto here petrol price rise or well better than the foul and horrific tax Hike on wine and spirits the UK government have plagued us with. Yep, uh, price of alcohol going up there, obviously. Uh, what else? Uh, according to Spanish law, bars have what is called derecho de admisión, which means that owners can decide if they want to serve more drink or not. Yeah, but I haven't seen too many uh, people using that option, I don't think. Obviously, given the state that some people get into, when uh, drinking in these resorts, uh, Kim also saying that I think the bar staff know when to cut off the to cut the alcohol supply off, but it becomes a difficult balancing act when trying to appease groups of belligerent drunk tourists. It's a ch. Yes, that's also true. That's also true. Vegetarian option in Spain: chips. Yes, <laughs> that's a vegetarian option. Yes. Uh, challenging, says uh, Kim. That was the end of that sentence there. It's challenging. Yeah, it is. That's exactly right. It's not easy. Manuel coming in from uh, Valencia, been busy and uh, not been able to catch the live streams. Uh, thanks, uh, Manuel, for letting us know. But uh, back today, of course. Alan saying that in the US, it's illegal to serve alcohol to an intoxicated person. Fines to the server and customer uh, and possible loss of license. Yeah, I'm sure those... Rules exist in Spain, as uh, Erica pointed out, but uh, how often do people use them, especially when, you know, as we know, in those summer months, people try to fill their pockets uh, as much as as much they can. Um, Arnold saying that uh, summer finally in Bedfordshire. Yep, so uh, summer hitting uh, England at least. Uh, El Lobo asking, do they sell lamingtons in Spain? I uh, don't think they sell lamingtons. You could probably make them yourself, you make them yourself if you wanted to, uh, El Lobo, but uh, being able to buy them? No. Um, 
Welsh Donalds had uh, thousands of great meals in Spain, but the puddings, man oh man, there was a huge lack of imagination. Absolutely a huge lack of imagination when it comes to dessert. Absolutely. Um, let's have a look here. The Spanish constitution uh, prohibits independence of any part of the country. Yes, that's why the Catalonians ended up in jail, wasn't it? Because it was anti-constitutional. But... They just went, uh, the main one just went to live in Belgium for a little while, a little sojourn in Belgium. Uh, Stan coming in from uh, Poland, I think, flying into Madrid tomorrow uh, for a long weekend after a week. There we go. Hope uh, Madrid treats you well and it's not too hot, Stan. Hope not. Angel Victor coming in. Que pasa, máquina? Uh, I'm all right, uh, Angel. Uh, I hope you are well too. Greetings from Manchester, obviously living there in the UK, Angel Victor. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Yolanda Diaz is the second after the Prime Minister and belongs to the Communist Party. Yeah, but I don't think they, they run in elections, do they, Jose Antonio? That was my point. I don't think they uh, run as a party in elections. I think they're in the Izquierda Unida group, right? Whereas here in Spain, I think the Communist Party, I might be wrong, but well, actually they might uh, go into elections under another name as well. I think they do. That's right. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Killian. I don't think I've come across Spanish pudding down on the Costa del Sol. I do have a liking for boccherones and proper prawn pil pil. So very poor, uh, some very poor quality pil pils on the Costa. It says Killian, the uh, pil pil. Um... Erica saying that one of her favourite dishes is uh, cococcas al pil pil. Um, let's have a look. Pamela's in the chat. Bit late today. No problem, Pamela. Good to see you here. Uh, American Seoul, but you get the big player in Valencia. Uh, yeah, there's a beach, but when it's 42 degrees, uh, I don't think you'll get many too many people uh, on the beach. I could be wrong, but uh, you would have to be... Uh, uh, You'd have to like punishment to go to the beach on a 42 degree day, in my opinion. But it is summer, so I imagine people were there. Hi, Stu, and uh, from a hot Torre Vieja, enjoying a nice cold Cruz Campo, says Stephen. Maybe that's the one in his hand in the picture there. Don't know. Uh, there may be a little bit of arrogance, according to Anthony, relating to the cuisine. I know that the Argentinian believe that they have the best cuisine, but from experience after a couple of weeks uh, of all the meat. Yeah, every country uh, seems to think that their cuisine is the best, especially uh, countries that have a very strong sense of national identity, Argentina being one of those, I think, Anthony Wright. You only have to see that when the uh, football side plays, that uh, people are very patriotic. And also when it comes to their food, happens here in Spain, France, Italy, all of these countries that have that um, uh, very strong sense of patriotism towards those things. And uh, yeah, but you do get sick of it after a while. I agree with that. Uh, what else we got going on here? Just let me have a look here quickly. Um, I've lost the chat section. Here we go. Uh, I'll just see if I can find it back here uh, where I was. I've lost my place. Uh, yeah, Anthony, you start craving veggies in Argentina. That is true. Welsh Toto saying that you have uh, natillas, arroz con leche, fran food, or an ice cream. Same options in 95% of all the restaurants. Yes, that is true. Thank you for, for uh, reminding me of that, the limited options when it comes to uh, postre. Maybe you might get a cuajada thrown in there as well, which is uh, some t type of... Um, a dairy dish. We used to call it junket, I think, in Australia. Not sure what they call it in other places, but it's a, a dairy dessert. Uh, what else we got going on? Let's have a look. Um, a fire on the island of uh, Maui. Uh, 36 plus dead. So that was, that's what the tragedy was there before. Uh, the highest, uh, Jen shot the highest uh, temperature photo today, 23 in 2023, sorry, 47 degrees Celsius on a billboard in the sun. At least the humidity isn't too high today and almost dry heat for the Mediterranean. Well, that's uh, a relief. That is a relief. El Conquistador coming in from San Augustin, Florida, 37 degrees there. Feels like 45 due to the humidity. So humid in um, Florida. 
Ed coming in from Oklahoma, another uh, United States viewer. Uh, different Gear TV says that um, some bars in Valencia are limiting uh, time 20 minutes on the terrace for a drink. Uh, said that people have to stay for five hours for one coffee. Yeah, that uh, pops up every now and again in the in the uh, news cycle. I think Granada was doing something uh, similar. I think uh, I remember seeing it in the press last year, maybe. As for serving alcohol in the U.S., the server or bartender are totally irresponsible. If a customer leaves an establishment and kills someone in an auto accident, the bartender is responsible. So there we go. And that's probably why they uh, cut back on that. Not sure if that is the same in Spain. Not sure. Heidi saying that it's still baking in Madrid. Uh, yes, I know that it is hot there today. I know that it is hot. I have heard that it is hot in Madrid. And I'm sure that those air conditioning units are working overtime at the moment. High Flyer saying that uh, Cruz Campo, now in the UK. All the best, John. Cruz Campo, eh? Eh? Making, uh, making a move overseas. Making a move overseas is Cruz Campo. Yeah, well, some people like it, some people don't. I'm on the uh, side of the fence that I don't like Cruz Campo unless it's the uh, Espe uh, Reserva Especial, the one that I've got down there for my beer video, which will be coming up shortly. I'm planning it. I'm trying to work out how to do it because I don't want to open too many cans of beer and be forced to drink them. So I've got to control that aspect of the video. But uh, perhaps, or maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Um... Devil called once his weather back, says uh, Heidi. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Gur, uh, I'm originally Irish living in Pamplona. I love the food here, about 20 years, plus weather is a fecking killer this week, says Gur. Hot there. I can imagine. Uh, if hoping I'm I hope, Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If not, let me know. Uh, or is it Gur or Gur? Not sure. Hi, Stu from Dublin. Would you rather retire or semi-retire in a community away from the typical retirement areas in the south of Spain or Portugal? Uh, I haven't got to uh, thinking about that yet. I'll start thinking about that soon, and uh, I'll let you know, uh, Cloudland. But uh, uh, I probably wouldn't go to one of the typical retirement areas. Or if I did go there, I'd try to find a town that wasn't overrun by uh by a foreign tourists mainly that's what i would try to do foreign uh, uh, retirees mainly i would try to find a place that's uh, close but not in the middle of it if that makes sense so probably um here in portugal maybe not the algarve or somewhere like that but um uh yeah i'll look into it soon cruz Campo has a big marketing campaign in the uk going on there we go good luck with that no. Is, is, it, is it a beer that travels well? That's my, my, my question. That's my question about that. Is it a beer that travels well, Cruz Campo? Is it a beer that you would turn to in, uh, at the supermarket in England? I don't know. Or the UK. Don't know. Don't know. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Welsh Toto says it's a pet hate. Uh, people that uh, take... Uh, T table time up in a busy bar to uh, having just one drink. Now, I can imagine that uh, is a problem, especially if you're the owner of the bar. Heidi says, have I tried Superbock beer in Portugal? Absolutely, I've tried uh, Superbock. I've got a couple of cold ones in the fridge at the moment, Heidi, but uh, I'm trying to find some different beers other than the uh, two main beers here in Portugal. Portugal is really a, a two-bar country. Every bar and restaurant that serves beer either has Superbock or Sagres is the other one. So you're limited for choice when you go out. But in the supermarkets, you can get uh, a little bit of a, a variety, not the variety that you'll get in Spain, but it's, uh, it's improving. It's improving. It's improving. Um, let's have a look. Gare here. Thank you very much, Gare, for pointing that one out. Thank you very much. I was pronouncing it okay, Gare. Thank you. Um, and uh, I could do one, open one beer each live stream halfway through and do a live review. I could do that, yeah, but I'm thinking more of a, a, a dedicated video. But I could bring a drink into the, um, 
live streams, whether it's a, a, a beer in the second half, we could have a beer together, we could have maybe a glass of wine, we could do something like that, but um, uh, I want to do d a dedicated video or two on those beers. I think that would be the, the best option, but thanks for the uh, suggestion there, Different Gear TV. Um, what else? There's some good craft beers in Spain nowadays. Absolutely, there is uh, Welsh, absolutely, lots of craft beers, and it's also forcing the traditional breweries to, to get off their backsides and improve the quality of their beer and put more types of beers into the market, which is always good. That's the thing that I like about the uh, system, is that uh, competition uh, normally uh, increases the uh, offer, which is good. And uh, exploring with Jen saying that uh, Kuth Campo Pilsner is okay on a severely hot day. Yeah, my um, uh, experience with Kuth Campo is that when you're in Malaga on a hot day and uh, you're thirsty, Kuth Campo tastes good. But when you're in a place where maybe it's not so warm and you're not looking at the Mediterranean uh, uh, Sea, uh, it's not the best beer in the world. That's been my experience. And uh, it's not a beer that I would turn to. Not a beer that I would turn to. Uh, but anyway, let's... Uh, start to wrap the live stream up thank you very much for uh watching thank you very much for participating in the chat i'll be back again on sunday and as i said maybe tomorrow a dedicated beer video coming out with a few that i uh, bought uh, before coming here because obviously beers here are limited and it's impossible to get spanish beer in portugal i haven't even seen cruz campo in the supermarkets here let alone any, any other type of spanish beer so uh, not very uh, easy to get spanish beer but i stocked up before i came i'm looking at them right now and uh, i'll probably put out a dedicated beer, beer, beer video tomorrow if my schedule uh, goes according to uh, my if my schedule goes according to schedule that makes sense so um i'll see you guys uh, in the next live stream have a great day hasta luego hasta entonces buenas noches